Hello there. Uh, my name is Chris Starr, and I'm from the Wild Cornell Medical Center. And with me today is my good friend, uh, colleague, Nate Radcliffe, uh, also from the Wild Cornell Medical Center. Uh, Nate, you're a, a recognized uh, expert in this arena uh, and uh, as it uh, pertains to glaucoma and IOP measuring. Uh, and you've done a lot of work. So for, for starters, uh, there are a lot of people out there who have heard the word hysteresis, uh, but may not actually know what that means. Can you explain what hysteresis is. Corneal hysteresis is a so-called corneal biomechanical property. It's actually a corneal behavior and it describes the way that the cornea responds right. to a jet of air uh, that is applied to it uh, during applanation tonometry. As the story goes, when Reichert, uh, who um, produces the only device to measure corneal hysteresis, was first measuring intraocular pressure, with applanation from an air jet, they noticed that the cornea dented in at one pressure and rebounded at another. Mm -hmm. And they actually wanted to ignore that difference between those two pressures, which is actually what we now know as corneal hysteresis. Uh, but through some early work, they realized the corneal hysteresis may describe these biomechanical properties. Uh, the term I like to use is uh, the viscous dampening, mm -hmm. which in, in my mind, not the mind of an engineer, but the mind of a clinician, describes how much energy a given cornea can absorb uh, when that jet of air is applied to it. Interesting. And so what are the implications uh, when it comes to measuring IOP and, and how has it affected the way you practice glaucoma? Well, you know, sort of like corneal thickness has evolved in our minds, the meaning of hysteresis has evolved over time as well. So initially, uh, corneal thickness was thought to be a pressure adjustment parameter, and then we learned it has something to do with risk, and it's kind of the same thing with corneal hysteresis. Uh, I have a study with uh, Josh Ehrlich and Mitsugu Shimio, where we just looked at a population of glaucoma patients and used something called corneal compensated intraocular pressure, which is simply uh, a Goldman uh, applanation tonometry um, uh, type pressure measurement done with uh, air jet or non-contact tonometry adjusted for the corneal hysteresis. So if you have a low hysteresis, your corneal compensated pressure will be higher than the Goldman applanation tonometry correlated measurement. Uh, and what we found, uh, not terribly surprising, was that glaucoma patients had a higher pressure than you were reading uh, when you use this corneal compensated measurement. And in fact, that normal tension glaucoma patients uh, really using this type of definition weren't normal tension at all, but actually if you account for the cornea, had a high pressure in fact. Interesting. And so the, the relationship of hysteresis and corneal thickness, uh, there's been a lot of uh, discussion about that. They are not linearly related. They're, 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 you can have low hysteresis with a thick cornea and vice versa. Absolutely. Uh, they're weakly correlated, and I think the key there is weakly. Yeah. Uh, so certainly you can't assume that a patient with a thick cornea is going to have a, a, a high hysteresis. They might, they might have a low hysteresis, and that's where you could really make you know, some of these, um, these assumptions that would be incorrect. Right. Uh, so there's a relationship, but I, I like to focus on the differences between the two. As you know, corneal thickness is almost always the same, and actually often within a micron or so between two eyes fascinating how that can be. Uh, corneal hysteresis is often different between the two eyes and Anand and Jeff Lieben and Bob Rich have shown that in fact the eye that has that lower hysteresis is probably going to be the one with more glaucoma damage. Uh, and uh, we also know that hysteresis changes not just a little bit like hysteresis might but quite a bit if you change the pressure. So again, it's, I like this concept, it's a behavior, it's dynamic, it's different between the eyes, it's different right. between glaucoma patients. Both hysteresis and corneal thickness uh, differ a little bit with race and ethnicity, with those higher risk groups, uh, African Americans, Hispanics, having the lower hysteresis or the thinner cornea. Uh, and it all, they are both also lower with age. So again, you're seeing glaucoma risk factors uh, traditional glaucoma risk factors now explained with corneal properties and corneal behaviors. Interesting. So do you still routinely measure both uh, or can you just sort of measure hysteresis and forget about corneal thickness? Yeah. Well, I think, uh, you know, if, if a resident is presenting a glaucoma patient to me and they omit the corneal thickness, <laughs> I, I feel like I haven't heard the, the full story. You so. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, they, there's some disciplining that occurs <laughs> and then I explain that I need my glaucoma vitals. Pressure, field, nerve, corneal thickness, patient's age, uh, those are sort of the, the meat and potatoes of glaucoma management. 
There's enough data now to say that the corneal biomechanical assessment, and right now what we have is just corneal hysteresis, should probably be part of that assessment. Uh, we've now got five studies um, that have shown that comparing corneal thickness and hysteresis, uh, you get a little bit more predictive ability in terms of which glaucoma patients are progressing quicker from the corneal hysteresis data compared to the corneal thickness data. In fact, when you rely upon the corneal hysteresis in most studies, the corneal thickness will fall out of the model and not have any statistical importance.